<coughs> We'd like to share some insight that uh, that my wife had just a few minutes ago concerning some narcs in our life, um, specifically our daughter and my wife's father, my father-in-law. And, and her insight was this, and this is the truth, it never failed. It seems every time we were with my father-in-law, my narc father-in-law, the, the main course, the main topic of discussion was always who is sick, who is dying, who is going through a, a rough time in their life. Just a bunch of woe. Con, you know, concerning other mm -hmm. people. And I had forgotten this until she just, my wife remembered that our daughter would do the same thing. Every She would call my wife every day, I mean, multiple times a day. Yes. <laughs> and without fail, open the conversation with the same thing. The people that she knew that we knew possibly who were sick, dying, broke. It wasn't even people we knew. Yeah, you, it's yeah. Strangers, it's like okay. You're right, strangers. Yeah. Why are you telling me this? And I always thought it was strange. Well, we'll go ahead and say, <laughs> share what uh, the insight you had. I think it's the truth. They like to feed on our emotion. They don't have any of their own, any true emotion, and they study you to see how you react so they can mimic how to react themselves. That's the insight that, you know, really struck me. They're studying you. Yeah. <laughs> You're under a magnifying glass <laughs> or a, under a microscope. They don't know, because they're dead inside emotionally. They don't know how to respond no. to, you know, si you know, bad situations. Yeah. They don't know the, quote, right way to respond to negative situ circumstances, right? Is that right, yeah. So they study us. They study those who do. And that's why a lot of times you'll see them overreact on a situation and you wonder why what are why the drama why why are you acting like this and it's because that's the response they thought was expected of them yeah <laughs> they they're just actors <laughs> So I'm, I, I'm just curious, we're curious, have any of you <laughs> experienced this? I don't know if I've heard anyone else mention that, you know, they're narcs, obses seeming obsession with, you know, people's problems and, mm -hmm. and troubles, but yeah. that, that sure was the case in our life. Yeah. And I believe that's, uh, that is the truth, that they were and there's other factors behind it, but they were studying us, mm -hmm. trying to figure out the right way to respond to tragedy. Yeah. Would you share about your sister, your narc sister, the feet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good example, I think. Well, I got called to the hospital before my mother passed, and I reluctantly finally went out of guilt, of course, but I went, and I came into the room, and it, again, this happened too, I mean, the moment I walked into Rome, I, I swear they were all looking at me, they were all gathered around her, 
And they all looked at me when I came in the room as if they were studying my emotions to see how I was going to react. But then a little later, um, my, youngest, my youngest sister, she was in there with her and she started, and I mean, my, my mother had an aneurysm. So she was really not there at the time anyway. She was pretty much gone. Her body was being kept alive by machines. And my youngest sister was playing with her feet, tickling them, watching the, the toes twitch. <laughs> and I looked at her like, what the hell are you doing? But I didn't say it, I just gave her that look. And she kind of giggled. <laughs> I, I like doing this. <laughs> what the hell? Clueless. Why? Your mother is dying, and actually already did. Mentally. But yeah. Your mother's dying. Your mother's dead. And you're playing with her feet. There's something wrong with that. It's crazy. It just goes to show me, at least, there's nothing inside. No. There's nothing there. It's scarier than shit. When you think about it, that's who it we're is. dealing with. Yeah. That's what we're dealing with. They talk about zombies. I mean, there, there you, you go. There you go. There we go. We got them, all right. Yeah, they might not, their flesh might not look like they're falling off the bones, but they're dead on the inside. Moral and spiritual zombies. Yeah. Well, you still have that rant in you about preachers and money and all that. Do you want to share anything on that? It's off the, it's a different topic. Yeah. Go That's for right. it. Well, preachers are kind of uh, immobilized, and feel free to add anytime. <laughs> preachers are immobilizing their congregations. They're, oh, what's the word, they're, they're like hypnotizing them, or it's like cults anymore. All these churches are like cults. Now, if you have one that's different, well, I congratulate you, you're, you know, you're fortunate. You're fortunate. <laughs> but the ones that I've seen, they, they all look like cults. I mean, the preacher's standing up there in his fancy... Italian suit telling you you need to give me more money <laughs> you're not tithing and you're sitting if you're tithing you're not tithing in fact one actually said one time that you're going to hell if you don't tithe yes. didn't he? Kareflo Dollar <laughs> I wasn't going to drop any names <laughs> Kareflo Dollar said <laughs> alright yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah. And they, they're like all in competition to get jets and who has the biggest mansion and some of them even have a horsey ranch and some of them have multiple churches and like that's to a fly back and forth. Tony, that's a parsonage. Oh, okay. Let me correct you. That's a parsonage. <laughs> okay. But they're beating down these people, their congregation, to give them more. And then they'll beat them over the head about judging. Don't you judge. Don't you judge me. Don't you judge me for driving <laughs> my Mercedes. Don't you judge me for my jet. I need that. It's for the gospel. <laughs> yeah. And my pocket. <laughs> And there 
was one of them, one of these um, mega churches that had a tragedy happen just across the street from the church. A little girl was taken into a motel room and murdered. The community was devastated. Yeah. Did the pastor go make a visitation to the family even though they probably weren't members? Did the pastor say a prayer for the family, for the comfort of the family? Especially her parents. <laughs> Did the pastor take up a collection? Maybe even dig into his own pocket and maybe share a dime that he's been donated to. He wasn't even in town. He left He town. was out of town. <laughs> he got out of Dodge. For a couple of weeks. Maybe more. He wasn't there for his congregation. The congregation that gives him all this money. So he can have his horsey ranch in Florida. Drive his Mercedes. And other fancy cars. Live in his mansions. Plural. Yes, plural. Because we've got the one in Florida with the horsey ranch. And who knows, there may be more other places too. It really disgusts me. And then they'll pray a, a lame prayer. God is in control. So, you know, you have no control. So you're immobilized to do anything on your own. And then the don't you judge. And you know you're judging when you look at that person the wrong way. Which, I mean, there are people that do that, but it's... This is the same community that lost one of their young children. And it's not a rich community. Well, it's actually, there's the rich, and then there's the poor. There's no in-between. There ain't no middle class here. No. We're kind of the only exception. I don't know where we fall. <laughs> <laughs> that still we're, remains we're to be the seen. Yeah. That we're remains to be seen, but that's okay. But he's telling these beaten down people who work forty to sixty hours a week. Oh man. Sometimes uh, some of them have two jobs. To survive, just to survive. And he's become their thought police. Don't you judge. Now, if he was a true man of God, he would know the real meaning of the verse they love using, Jesus telling the religious leaders of that time that they were judging, and if you judge, you'll be judged. Well, you know, he was telling them about being hypocrites. And it's funny because that's exactly what they're doing. Their hypocrisy stinks. They're abusing the church. And you know, I've also heard them mention it's that same pastor's wife we mentioned in the other video. <laughs> if you were abused just yesterday, forgive. Get over it. Forgive. Well, yeah, the scars may heal, but what they've done to the inside of you is a different matter. Maybe she's not heard of PTSD. But 
But then again, she's a narc, so she yeah. doesn't really care. Get over it and open your wallet. Let's face it, that's the gist of it. It all goes back to that. Open your wallet to me. Give me your money. For what? I think we're going to have to cut her off. Uh, yeah. the, the weed patrol's coming. Uh -oh. so. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, guys. Thank you.